Dairy Q on TikTok asked, when's the face reveal? Well, how about now? Yo. <laughs> hey, I'm the creator of the Odd Animal Specimens TikTok account, Instagram account, and YouTube channel. And this is a Q&A. If you're here from YouTube, you've probably seen me before. This is not very surprising, but if you're from TikTok or Instagram, this could be the first time you see my face. So, hey guys, what's up? This is what I look like. I hope it's okay. <laughs> so there are a lot of questions in the comment sections of the videos I post on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And I've compiled together the most common ones. It's gonna be some things about the collection, some things about specimens, some things about, I don't know, my job and what I studied in college. So hopefully this answers your questions. There are a lot of the similar ones. <laughs> I'm gonna first rip through the most common ones that I get almost like on every TikTok I post the least. First, is it real? Yes, everything is real. Even the sea lamprey, the Sicilian's real. Even that giant walrus um, wiener bone is real. <laughs> is it dead? Yes, it is. Everything is a preserved animal specimen that's in some scientific collection that's used for research. They are no longer alive. Now we'll get into some specific questions that I've found in the comment sections. Nept the Witch on TikTok asks, My granddad left me two skulls, and I'd really appreciate any tips or help figuring out what they are. So if you have something that you're looking to identify, um, particularly a skull, you need to check out something called a dichotomous key. This is what I use to learn all of my identification. I like to think of it almost like a choose your own adventure book. Here's, here's what it's like. You have your skull and you have your key and the key's gonna ask you a question like, uh, does it have sharp teeth or flat teeth? You answer that question, you're like, oh, it has sharp teeth. The key will say, if it has sharp teeth, go to question number nine. You go to question number nine, it'll be something else. Is it longer than a foot or shorter than a foot? You keep answering these questions and it takes you down a certain little path, like a choose your own adventure book, until you land on a correct identification of whatever skull you have based on its, its characteristics and traits. They're really fun to use. It's almost like a puzzle. And after a while, if you use them enough, you can get really good so you can just like know the traits on your own. That's, that's how I work out my speed runs. Uh, but of course, the most important tip I can offer is uh, to first make sure it's not a fish. I kind of think this is a fish. It could be a fish. I think it's a fish because you never know. It could be. And if you'd like some more personal help identifying something that you have, there is a tier on my Patreon where I'll help you identify something. It's a little bit more expensive, but you could always do it as a one-time thing if you're really interested. And the link to my Patreon will be in the description of this video. Next question. Steve Buscemi's fart box was wondering, do you sell? I would buy so much from you. This is like my most popular DM. I got a lot of DMs of people that want to buy this stuff. Like, yo, are you selling that porcupine fish? <laughs> uh, <laughs> these are all scientific specimens, so um, none of them are for sale. Um, but thank you for the question, Steve Buscemi's fart box. Appreciate it. Kind of along the same lines on Instagram, Leopoldo was wondering, hey man, would you be interested in any exchanges? I'm trying to make a collection for educational purposes. I think it's really cool that in a lot of the comments, people are interested in trying to figure out like, how do they get their hands on some specimens? They wanna, I don't know, check them out or start a collection of their own. There are a couple different places where you can get your hands on some specimens. The cool one I think is your local museum. Often museums have these educational packages that you can check out almost like a library. Um, and some of them have some really legit stuff in them. I know, like in the Natural History Museum in Chicago, I'm pretty sure you can check out a box of T-Rex bones, and that's kind of outrageous. On Instagram, Colton underscore A underscore E asked, what is the liquid that they are in, and what does it do? Okay, this is it. Colton's wondering about the wet specimens. So there are two types of specimens in, in museum collections. There are dry specimens that are bones, and wet specimens, which are specimens in, in jars of fluid. The fluid is a mixture of ethanol and water. You Usually it's 75% ethanol. If it's a reptile or amphibian, it could be different, maybe 65%, but the ethanol is what preserves the, the whole entire animal so that it doesn't decompose over time. At this point, it's the only way of preserving like entire specimens, like the whole animal without taking it apart and just preserving like the hide and the bones separately. And it does a great job. I mean, some of this stuff is like 100 years old and it looks exactly like the day that it was collected, which is really neat. Some of the stuff is preserved in uh, formalin, which is like this, oh, it's like this gnarly, gnarly fluid. I mean, when you crack open a jar of something preserved in formalin, it like assaults your eyeballs. That short video I made on a paradox frog, which is just that really weird looking frog, that was preserved in formalin and 
I cracked that open and my eyes were too close to the jar and my vision was blurry for like a week and a half after that. It was so nasty. On TikTok, Yeetmaster2127 asks, what's your favorite animal? I love American toads. They're kind of a boring pick, but I see them all the time whenever I'm outside. And I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Coco, but I'm pretty sure that an American toad is my albrihe. I don't know if I'm saying that right or if I'm thinking about that the right way. I just see them all the time. And whenever I'm outside and I see a toad, they always make me happy. So... Toads. Aisha Jackson asks, For Gunba be fugitive fur to Jinba. Aisha, thank you so much for watching my videos. I appreciate it. Dragon underscore 101239 asks, How did you start making videos? I started making videos a really long time ago. I had a bunch of accounts before odd animal specimens. And uh, basically, one summer during college, I had an internship at a historic estate in Delaware where I was a gardener <laughs> before getting into videos and film, I wanted to be a horticulturalist, so a professional gardener. So I had this internship in Delaware in the countryside, and uh, I don't know if y'all have been to Delaware before, but there's not much to do. So after I would tend the gardens all day, I would walk around the streams and try to catch frogs, because there were a lot of frogs there. I thought these frogs were so cool that I eventually made a video about them on my phone, and I posted it to YouTube because I wanted to share it with my family and friends, and the coolest thing happened. I posted it to YouTube and nobody watched it. <laughs> but I had such a fun time that I started making more videos about animals and nature and things like that. And it's like 10 years later and I'm still making videos in some way or another. But that's how I got started. I was bored in a summer internship in college in the middle of Delaware and I thought a frog was cool and I wanted to show my mom. Basically, that's it. <laughs> Armand underscore Hernandez on Instagram asks, how do you keep in jar large animals like human slash elephant, etc.? This is a good question. You see, a lot of the jars are very small and they're animals that are bigger than the jars. If you've seen any of the collection tours that I've posted, you notice in some of the wet collection rooms, there are these larger tanks. Those fit some of the larger animals. And in other museums, like I'm pretty sure I've seen this video that was taken at the Smithsonian or the British Museum where they store a giant squid in also a huge tank full of eth ethanol. More often than not, that's the move. If you wanna preserve the whole animal, you gotta submerge it in alcohol in some way. So they just get this huge tank and then just put it in and it just sits there. But more often than not, the big stuff isn't preserved whole. Um, the skulls and the hides are kind of preserved separately. But yo guys, Okay, ready? This is this is cool. In Los Angeles, I filmed a couple specimens at this thing called the Large Mammal Warehouse. Okay, ready? The Large Mammal Warehouse is in like a warehouse factory district on the outskirts of Los Angeles, and it's next to like a tortilla factory and a furniture storage facility. <laughs> it's this big warehouse the size of like a football field, and you go inside and this huge warehouse is full of giant shelves, and on all the shelves are enormous skeletons and bones. We're talking giraffes, hippopotamuses, beluga whales, any sort of whale you can think of. They have a skull in this warehouse from a blue whale that I swear is, is the size of a school bus. It's crazy. This place is so sick. When I was visiting, I couldn't film anything inside of it, but if you've seen the speed runs for anything with a big skull, like the giraffe one, the rhinoceros one, and the hippopotamus one, those were all filmed in that warehouse. Hopefully I can go back and film it and show you guys because it was, it was absolutely insane. On Instagram, Ferksty.Herzig asks, is the collection of animals your own personal collection or is it where you work? This is another common question that comes up all the time. 90% of the animals I filmed are from professionally kept museum collections. A handful of them are from my own personal collection, kind of my own personal collection. They're just specimens that I acquired because I wanted to film them. And all that is the stuff that I first posted on TikTok. So I'm talking like the sea lamprey, that giant hornet, uh, that squid. Those are things that I got from educational websites. You could get a sea lamprey online, surprisingly, so that I had something to film at the very beginning of this project. So basically I travel around the US and film specimens from different collections around the country. It's pretty cool because at this point, I've made certain connections so that I pretty much have access to any animal that uh, is alive on planet Earth right now which is super cool. Jekney underscore fur asks, hi, two questions. What is your job title? I was thinking taxonomist. And where do you work at to get access to all of these specimens? People wonder this a lot, it seems. What's my job? What did I study? How do I have access to all of this stuff? Ready? 
Here's the story. <laughs> so as I told you, I went to college initially to become a horticulturalist, a professional gardener. While I was in college, I kind of happened to get into scientific filmmaking and television. That kind of blossomed very quickly. And after I graduated from college, I worked on some educational television shows for National Geographic and Disney for a handful of years. That is a entirely different story that takes like a long time to describe. <laughs> if so, if you're interested in hearing that story, let me know, but I'll just keep it at that for now. But in college, I studied ecology and museum studies. Ecology is basically the science of how plants and animals interact with each other in the wild. So over the pandemic, a couple of my television shows got canceled. So I decided to pursue a research project to find out how to effectively use museum specimens in educational film. Because I have a background in museums and I always thought museum collections were this like enormously untapped resource for filmmaking. Nobody really uses them in television or, I don't know, internet content. And that was always very strange to me because they're literally just waiting in these rooms for you to like pick off the shelf and use. They're sitting there waiting to be filmed. It took a super long time, but when I was in college, I was making connections in certain museums. And ever since then, maybe over the past eight to 10 years, I've been continuing to make connections at different museums and kind of slowly gaining access to different museum collections. It's taken almost a decade, so a super long time. But finally, over the last year or so, I've been able to get into these places and begin to film things. It's been a really long process to kind of gain the trust of the people that work at these museums. And I think it's only worked out because I have a background in ecology and filmmaking uh, and museums. I kind of understand all angles of it. But here's the thing that I think a lot of you guys want to know. I think a handful of people are watching these videos and wondering, like, how can I work with this sort of stuff? So there are different jobs at museums that you can get to be really hands-on with, with specimens like these. You can be a researcher, a collection manager, or a curator. A researcher is someone who kind of studies this stuff. A collection manager is the person who maintains the collection. It's almost kind of like the librarian and moves it around and makes sure the jars are full and it's like super hands-on with everything. And then the curator is kind of kind of in charge of the collection and also does some research. It's kind of like a little bit of both. If you want any of those jobs, usually you major in something like biology or ecology or some sort of science like that undergrad. And then if you want to become a collection manager, you need a master's in whatever department that you want to be to collection manage, <laughs> like uh, ichthyology for fishes or mammalogy for mammals. And if you want to be a curator or, I don't know, like a researcher or something like that, often that requires a PhD. So again, like ichthyology, mammalogy, entomology, whatever department that you want to work in. And you'd be surprised, a lot of museums offer internships and stuff like that. So if you want to work and help out and get hands on with some specimens like the stuff that I'm filming, I feel like it should be pretty easy for you no matter what city you live in. Because like every city has a natural history collection somewhere. If you have any other questions, post them down in the comments. If you want some behind the scenes tours of the collections that I'm visiting, think about clicking join and becoming a member of the channel. Or just if you want to support it, you know, that'd be pretty great. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thanks so much for uh, joining us here on YouTube. And thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one. It was great to meet you.